Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of Doodle to Dazzle. I'm Charlie. And I'm Barbara. And today we're going to be diving into... From brief to a happy client. All right. From brief to happy client. So we're going to really talk about the you know what it's like for us to first have a meeting with a client and how we walk through the whole creative journey and partnership that we have with our clients all the way to you know making them a happy client at the end right Barbara <laughs> yeah, that's right it's a whole process as you can imagine and it starts with really understanding your clients and the client's brief mm -hmm. Um, now you have different types of clients. You have some clients that have a really good idea mm -hmm. of what they want. And then you have other clients who think they know what they want, but actually they want something else. You know? yes. So it's really important with your client that you ask the right questions mm -hmm. when you get the briefs. Because any kind of brief, you need to talk with them to really, really figure it out. Yes. That's if you don't want to have a million revisions <laughs> yeah, to say exactly. so, you know. So, yeah. So why don't you say a few things that you think are very important, Charlie? Um, to begin with, I think some of the most interesting things to ask is, first of all, what is the project about? What is the goal? What are the objectives? What are some of the outcomes they'd like to have? And then you'd also want to know who, who is this, who's the target audience? Who are we targeting this project towards? What are their preferences, interests? And then what's the kind of timeline the client is trying to work with or the budget and resources that they're willing to put into this project? Um, I would say these are like the key ones. Did I miss anything, Barbara? That I, that, I mean, there are a lot more questions to There's ask. There's a lot of but questions. What would be... Yeah. What, what are some of the other more interesting ones? Also? Uh, well, how many times you're going to revise? I think it's oh, an yeah. important one. <laughs> it's well, good to set that before also. You, um, you want to set the terms. You want to set the terms yeah. a little bit. Um, yeah, because yeah, it's, you know, otherwise you're just going to end up with a million revisions. Mm -hmm. And every revision takes again time. Yes. Um, you know, but, you know, to have a full list, um, one thing that we do, even after having a few, you know, successful projects with clients, is uh, we just go over a list that we we asked ChatGPT. We already spoke about that. I think a few times that uh, we use ChatGPT for different types of activities, and mm -hmm. we use this also as a tool to just go over like what questions should we definitely ask uh, so that we just don't miss anything. It's you know, it's not because it's the first time, but. You just you want to have a bit of a checklist. Um, now, you don't have to robotically go off that list. You can just have that with you so that you don't forget anything. But try to have a conversation. Yes. Uh, you can you know see how it goes or, a little bit. Uh, a lot of the time when agencies or well-established uh, design agencies, for example, branding agencies, a lot of the time they have already a template uh, of set questions that they ask clients or they have a workshop that they do with their clients where they go over these questions and get really in-depth answers out of them. So you can always try to create something of a client, uh, a template for yourself, but that also comes a bit in the trial and error process because it also def depends on the kind of services you offer. Yeah. So I think the more you do it, the better you get at it. And you also see what questions are most effective to ask. And then based on that, you can create a template. I think once we get to that stage, which I feel is pretty soon, we can uh, provide you with uh, our, an example, you, which we can make available for download as a PDF, if you'd yeah. like. You can do um, that, yeah. yeah. And then what happens after you have the brief, Barbara? So once you have your brief, of your client and you have you had your conversation you took notes don't forget to take notes very important um, write down the keywords that really jump out in the conversation mm -hmm. you take all that information and you start to brainstorm uh, a little bit now ideally it i mean i find it this a bit depending on everybody's creative process but for me i really like to work with a kind of mood board mm -hmm. so it's also 
you know, it depends on what kind of project and what kind of client. But if your client provides you with a mood board, it can be also really interesting to see what kind of images or what are the connecting factors between the things in the mood board. Mm -hmm. So you have your, your brief, your mood board, you have all these things. Then it's up to you to really start brainstorming and really get creative, I mm -hmm. think. So at this point of the process, it's really important to play with the elements, to come up with as many creative and crazy ideas as you can. Yeah. Because afterwards, you're going to take, you know, out of that whole bunch of ideas, you got to take the best ones and develop that, you know, yes, but you have to it, yeah. Yeah, refine it further. But you need to have, you know, you need to go all directions a bit to see, okay, what are the best ones? So at this point, you don't limit your ideas. You, maybe you do a bit of a deep dive. It depends on the project again. Right. You know, for me, I, I sometimes do a very serious deep dive. Mm -hmm. Like for this one project, I made a mood board that in the end had, you know, hundreds of images yes. to really yes. understand the client brief, to get some more ideas myself mm -hmm. because it was, it was an art style that I wasn't so familiar with. So mm -hmm. for me, that really helped me to get, uh, you know, to have some visual assets for myself to f start from a little bit. Yes. So, yeah. So basically your, your brainstorm. So the Pinterest is a great tool for making a mood board. Another great way to have different kind of ideas is uh, mind mapping a lot of artists use this as well it's basically you have your your keyword or your or your biggest keyword mm -hmm. and then you start putting the other words that you found out with the brief of the client you write them around your center word or, or whatever yeah and then you start finding you know uh, synonyms or or connecting words everything that kind of jumps up Mm -hmm. so that you can get very different kind of ideas that from what first might have felt a bit limited you know so yes. really play with your creativity here um you know the more ideas you get at this point the better there are no ba bad ideas or concepts at this point so it's more about you know you know, playing playing a little bit with it i would say yes yeah and and this can vary um, professional to professional, we've seen artists on Instagram who do it a bit differently and they have a different process. So what we're talking about here is more about what we do ourselves and what works with us. Mm -hmm. um, but there's always certain things that you would want to do. Maybe you do it at a different point in the fa uh, phase of your you know, project, but uh, having a mood board, doing the brainstorm, or the mind mapping is a very important and crucial role to um, finding ideas and turning your brief into a creative plan. Mm -hmm. And then we would go into more the execution phase, right, Barbara? Yeah. So basically from this whole jumble of different uh, ideas, mm -hmm. you're going to try to bring it together in a sort of format um, so that you can present maybe something to the client mm. before you even start drawing or illustrating or or making logos or whatever you do. Um, I think it's it, I feel like it's a good um, a good time to have a touch point with the with the client. Like, okay, so is this bit, you know? Yes. Um, what you, you is this what you meant or uh, how right. is this are feeling we, for are you? Are we going are in we the right the, direction? Are yeah. we on the same page? Uh, yeah. Are these images or whatever images that you found is this is this bringing the message that you wanted to give? Is this you giving you the feeling that you want to have for yes. uh, this project? So this can be color wise. This can be font wise. This can it be can be a lot of a things. lot of different things. In, in a way, you could say this is a bit the you know you present a concept or in our case, what we did the projects we worked on it was having thumbnail sketches and that sort of thing where you have a few concepts that you work and present to say which one do they like or what is the direction you go in. And there's often some debate about, okay, do you present one concept or do you present multiple? <laughs> or because clients often can be difficult because they don't know what they want. They're not experts. So they go so much on gut and what they like or 
uh, it, it's a feeling rather than say you as the expert, uh, the artist, or you as the expert uh, brand designer, graphic designer, you can lead the way for them. So often many professional uh, artists or designers, they will only give one concept. Of course, yeah. factoring in everything that the client has provided, factoring in the workshop and the discussions they've had. So they choose what is best for the client. And that way, by sort of limiting the choice that the client has, they give minimal feedback. So you don't do as many revisions later. And also, um, in a way, it, it's uh, less strenuous work later on. But in a way that also comes later on as you become more confident as, a, as an artist or a profession. Yeah, indeed. I agree with what Charlie says uh, because, you know, in the beginning when I started, when I had my first project, basically, uh, which were wedding cards, I actually <laughs> provided three complete, uh, complete uh, proposals. Yeah. You know, and uh, after and that doing... That was a lot of work. Uh, but it's not just that, like... I did that a few times um, because I was still learning in this whole thing and I thought this was how things were, <laughs> were done. Mm -hmm. um, but what I noticed is that clients just get a bit overwhelmed with the amount of information. And because, you know, th this is a lot for somebody that, that's not trained in mm -hmm. this. Yes. So already having one concept where you have a proposal with colors and text and, you know, that's already a lot of information. I'll bring that three times. You get completely confused. Mm -hmm. And, you know, every single time what happened is that, oh, I'll just take bits of all the proposals and mm -hmm. then it becomes kind of a mix anyway. Yeah. So, you know, in the end, <laughs> I had to make always a fourth option <laughs> on top of everything. So yeah. I, I feel like um, in this process, it's, it's important to be confident and mm -hmm. believe in your skills as well. You know, because it's, it's uh, yeah, it's unnecessary to come with, with three proposals, mm -hmm. I find. Yes, but again, it's a learning process. So don't um, stress too much if you, for example, tend to offer two or three concepts, two or three thumbnail sketches. That's fine. If that's what you need to do right now, go for it. Yeah. It might be more work for you. And maybe you need that to feel more confident in what it is you're offering. That's also okay. But I also think over time, if you want to be efficient with the time you put into a project and the returns you get financially or in on any other way, uh, you will also feel better if you just limit the client's expect um, the choice that you offer the client. And mm -hmm. that way you also feel bit better about what it is you're doing because Maybe you have a client who chooses the worst of the third option, you know, yeah. worst of the three <laughs> options or the, yeah. the one that you're not satisfied with or the one you do not want to do, but you're presenting it because for the sake for of the making sa three. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah. a lot of the time, and this is something many designers or artists will say like, oh, yeah, the clients will always choose the one that I, did. of course, they, you know, choose the one I didn't want to uh, choose or the one I did. I, they chose the one I didn't recommend or yeah, the worst And then you have to work then, on that. <laughs> so now and then you won't, enjoy, exactly. you won't enjoy it as much either. So, exactly. you know, believe in yourself as a designer, you know, or illustrator and have confidence there, mm -hmm. you know, that you're the expert and you know what is the best option there. Yes. Yeah. And then after that, you move on to working on the project, right, Barbs? Yeah. Yeah, indeed. So um, for me, I, I like to have before I start even with the start on the project is uh, I make a sort of like in, in the whole course of the project, actually, I have a sort of presentation that I keep filling in mm -hmm. um, after every meeting, because then also uh, what happens is that after your project is finished, you have something to look back onto. But also when you have a uh, sort of a disagreement or, or your client maybe doesn't like some parts of it, then you have something to uh, reference yes. to like, Hey, but we discussed this. You like this. Concept. You like this concept. I worked on this based on that what feedback, we discussed yeah, and yeah. the feedback. You have something visual to show the client, like, look, this is what we discussed. Yes. 
keep you know? it above the board yeah. and always have a record of the uh, you know things that you agree on the, yeah. the feedback they receive you receive from your clients and yeah. what you agree you will do yeah. together so that like barbara said you can always refer to it in case there are disagreements or they come back to say that oh i didn't say that or i don't like this or you yeah know, this and, way. and it can happen because People can also be forgetful. It's not always yes. like that people are trying to take you for a ride. People can be forgetful. And this yes. way, it's it's just nice to have something for both sides to look back to. Like, okay, this is what we agreed on. Yes. Because in the end, it's also a job, right? You need to have an open communication. The better that you communicate, the, the better for all parties involved, Yes. basically. You know, so... Uh, yeah, after you have all that, you just you start executing. You uh, you know you start on your project. You you make based on what you compiled, all the information, mm -hmm. the feedback. You you can start working. And maybe after the feedback, if if they didn't like your mood board or colors or whatever, maybe you need to do you know go back to the step before and revise it again before you start drawing. Make sure that you have you know, um, an approved mood board, colors, font. The before concept. You, the is, concept, yeah. basically, before you move ahead, Yes, I would say. And if for some reason they they don't like the concept anymore, of course, factor in that it, you can always say this is going to cost additional because this is not part of the Yeah, this is or, why it's important that so before... these kinds of things, it's you important say, yeah. you, you have it clear yeah. so that in case you're making a major revision like this which could take again hours or days of your time to do then you have to also make it clear for the client that hey this is if you want me to change the concept it's going to cost again i'm sorry but this is a lot of work that went into it and if you don't like it that's fine mm -hmm. completely okay but it will take extra time for me to do yeah. this right now this is if the concept is entirely different if there's a small revision that yeah that's that's okay. a different thing but this is why it's also important before you start doing anything that you say okay we have so many revisions included in your package or whatever exactly um so that the client also can take that into account otherwise they will just keep coming at you like okay you just change this and, oh okay you just and what constitutes as a revision also right like yeah. completely revising and starting a new concept entirely is a yeah. very different thing from revising an existing concept yes right? so, yeah uh, making some minor changes exactly. here and there yeah so yeah that's also yeah. something to keep in mind yeah yeah, yeah indeed yeah. And and another thing I would emphasize is that once you really start working on the uh, on the final uh, uh, how deliverable, let's call it like that, where you're actually working the concept into a final deliverable, whether it's uh, an art piece of art, um, piece of art, or whether it is branding Logo based branding. Uh, and branding assets, logos, etc. Um, at that point, I wouldn't go back for more feedback to the client until you come and present the final finished um yeah pro well product or wh however you call it mm -hmm. you it, after the you have the feedback from the concept don't go to the client for constant feedback after no, every little indeed. thing you progress yeah, on no but rather just the next thing you should be showing is the finished product yeah yeah yeah. I mean, you can have as an artist or, or designer, you can have your own, you know, uh, you know, parts where you just take a, not a break, but where you like revise yourself. But don't go for everything to the client because yes. it, it will be too much and maybe they, they will, in, you know, interrupt your process there too much. So use maybe a, a small network of people for that that are really close with you. You know, yes, if you if, if you, you need doubts. if you have doubts about something or. Or Even then, I wouldn't recommend it so much unless yeah. you're really stuck somewhere. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It really depends on the kind of people mm. that that you have surrounded uh, yourself with. Yeah, it's it's hard to say. Like, yeah, and then the the thing is, yeah. For me, I like I I wouldn't really go for yeah. any feedback simply because it can take away from your creative process. Yeah, I think it depends so, on where you're at. Um, I, that's where, yeah. for me, I would say to always go with the finished product. And yes. then any feedback, it's very limited to, 
okay, it's like these things need to change that color. I'm not so sure. Or it's a small thing versus mm -hmm. like, oh, the whole thing needs to be revised. Because mm -hmm. first of all, a finished product is going to be, if you're offering the service, that means you do whatever you're offering is good. You do a good job, good enough job to be able to offer it as a professional service for someone to purchase. So that means the finished product you give is going to be of professional grade. Mm -hmm. So in that, in that case, what it comes down to is more just minor changes, minor adaptations. But then if you keep going for small feedback to any, for every small adaptation, you go for feedback, your flow is disrupted, you have to make more changes. So it becomes far more inefficient. You lose too much time in this. Yes. We've had that before and we've learned that from experience. So uh, even from people not client related, other colleagues, sometimes you need to be like, okay, we'll showing this right now disrupt the process or if it's okay because it's something really tiny you see so it also depends on that kind of thing mm -hmm. like barbara said um but yeah i would just wait until you have a finished product yeah. to get any kind of client feedback. yeah the thing is having the feel of what is right at that moment you also get it through experience yes you know so it's just having more projects under your belt you just get better at, at yes. it also and also yeah. it's just super satisfying to show the client the finished product because oh, yeah. you always have that wow factor like yeah. especially if you did a good job yes. and that's what it comes down to is you wouldn't be offering the service if you weren't professional enough mm -hmm. so if what you do and what you feel and think is quality work high quality work we believe what we do is that so whenever we for example barbara worked on the wedding cards and the feeling that people were left with when they saw the card like properly printed and in their hands for the first time or the design. Um, sorry, not the print. The print was another aspect altogether. <laughs> but when we showed them the designs for the first time on, on the screen, even then, it was super impressive. And it left them feeling very happy and satisfied. And it was the, yes. this, this feeling of, of wonder. and. That's also very satisfying. That's yeah, very it's, fulfilling. it's the it's the best <laughs> feeling in the world when you know when you hear your clients say like, "Oh, this is this is me. This is us. This is you know with the wedding card, and you know this is exactly what I wanted. This feels so us, yes. You know that that is like the best feel. That's when you know that you nailed the brief. <laughs> no, what's better is actually when they say this is not what I expected, but it's better than yeah. what I expected. Yeah. That's like the yeah, best feeling. Yeah, that's, you know? the, that's, that's the yeah, best feeling. Yeah, yeah, I gotta agree. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, you know, the, the most important thing through, throughout the whole process is a, a really good communication. Yes. You know, but like, also knowing when to communicate yes. and when not to. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's yes. also very important. Yes, 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 indeed. And you know, when you when it comes to, uh, to the time to present your uh, your design, show it with confidence because yes. if you're doubting, your client's gonna feel it. Yes, and, and and do your best to present it in a way. For example, do a presentation, ha have a PowerPoint or whatever necessary to do the presentation, so that you explain why you did this, why you made these choices. Yeah. Um, why did you do this or that? Exactly. And this can also be part of what you do in, when you present the concept yes. before you work on the final product. You also have a presentation there explaining the reasons why you chose this concept. Why were the choice? Why you chose these colors? Why you chose that? So yes. that the client is also on the same page can yes. understand that what it is you're trying to do. Yes. For me, that's like part of the presentation a bit you don't just I mean, for me uh, it doesn't really work to just oh here's here's the final result yes. me, i like to you know keep them on the tip of their chair a little bit longer and just uh and and just go over the things that that you have discussed before because yes. maybe they forgot also like yes. and then it's a good refresher for everybody like 
to see, oh yeah, we discussed that you like these colors, we yes. discussed that you like this, so uh, you it, just it, go over the, the things a little yeah, bit again. It, and it's helpful because that means that you're, you know, the explanation you're providing is also shows the client that you've been paying attention. Yes. That you're listening to their needs, you're listening to their likes and dislikes, you're listening to everything that you should have been paying attention during the initial uh, phase of doing the workshop or asking these questions to define mm -hmm. the creative brief mm -hmm. that you should be. This is why we ask those questions. Yes. So because, first of all, you're on just trying to understand what it is the client needs. And it, later on, when you present it in your work, it will reflect that, hey, you've been paying attention. Yes. If the clients are not happy, it's usually because you're not paying attention to their needs. You're not yes. paying attention to what they want, yes. who they are, yes. what they like, who yeah. are they targeting, and all these things. You, yeah. That means you've missed the brief. Yeah. That's what they say. Yeah, but this is the thing. It's a, it's a lot of gut feeling here. And when yes. you have questions, when you have like, hmm, I'm not sure what my client means here, dig into it. Yes. Seriously, like ask those questions and, and have a conversation whenever you have a small dot. Or you notice that, for example, maybe like we had to, we had this client also with the, with the window painting, which was really fun to do. And uh, she was really, really amazing, by the way. So she gave us complete liberty with the project. She said this, you can do your own thing on the window. But then, you know, we went for the brief mm -hmm. and we, we were having a conversation and I noticed that she was really passionate about what she did. Oh. And something that came up a lot in that is story. I love the, I will, I want to tell the story of the yarn, of the wool yes. and all that. And I picked up, I picked up on that. And we, we talked about that a little more. And because of that, I understood the importance of it for her shop, which yes. was a yarn shop. And because of that, I came with a concept that was linked to that as mm. well. And I mean, she, she, she would have been happy maybe with something else also, but we went an extra mile there because we paid attention, yes. you know, to what mattered, you know, yes. what, what, resonates, is their story? what resonates yes. with her a lot. So this is why you got to really pay attention to what your client is, is saying, because, you know, maybe they're saying one thing, but their heart is, you know, is in, somewhere else, is somewhere yeah. else, but maybe they don't dare to say, or maybe, you know, they don't know, how they, they don't express know, themselves. but maybe yeah. they don't know themselves. That's what they yes. want, you know? So as a designer, it's very important to, to listen. Yes. To listen it's really well. It's a big well. skill you need to work on. Yeah. Yes. Whether you're an artist, designer, or working in a creative field. Pay attention, people. Yes. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Because in conversation, things come up always. Always. And you you gotta you gotta see where, you know, what is happening, what they're saying. You know, it's it's one of the most important things to to have a, you know, a extremely satisfied client. Yes. You know, it's because because you listen. That's yes. I think the biggest takeaway. <laughs> yes. From all this. So so yeah. It's it's okay if you're not applying all of these tips in in the right way or what you think, uh, you know, the way we do it and all that. We understand that when you're at a different point in your journey, there's always some trial and error, some figuring out. Maybe you missed asking a question or maybe you missed a brief because you didn't pay enough attention or because the client was stubborn. I mean, these are part, this is part yeah. of doing business. This yeah. is part of how it is. And it's okay. Um, just try to factor in these biggest tips for next time you work on a project and think about, okay, how can I make my time more efficient? Because it's all about efficiency, because time is money. You need to know that the time you put in is in the end worth it for both you and your clients. And this comes from having and trying your best to follow these different stages of, you know, from brief to happy smile. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it's like Charlie says, says, like, learn from whatever mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. It's OK. Mm. We've also made mistake, like, mistakes, you know, so it's it's OK. Just learn from it and maybe note down, OK, next time I want to do this differently or maybe next time I should ask this question. It's also completely normal that uh, your process has to grow. Yes. 
So it's uh, it's totally fine. Yes. <laughs> if you're already listening to this, that's a good step <laughs> yes. in the right direction, right? Exactly. So. <laughs> Okay, so um, thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Doodles to Dazzle. Please, um, if you like this episode, please share with your colleagues and friends if you think it would be a benefit to them. Also, <laughs> please subscribe to our podcast, which is available across so many channels, if you're, which you're anyway listening to. Um, also, you can find us on social media at charby.online. Mm -hmm. We're on Instagram, Facebook. TikTok. Oh, and yeah. if, if you have any feedback or any questions or any topics you would like to hear us discuss, feel free to send us a message or to tag us on uh, on all the social media. We're looking at all of them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're yes. waiting for you to yes. reach out. Yes, <laughs> and know? and if you if you I genuinely liked listening to us make these episodes every week. Please do leave a review on your podcasting or channel. Or a thumbs up. Or a thumbs up, <laughs> if that's possible. I, I, I don't know or if it stars. is. Stars or are stars. Also totally stars fine. and reviews. That's what we're looking for. <laughs> yeah. You know, because yes. we, we like to shine bright like a diamond. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, I had to add one of those uh, tacky <laughs> lines in there. Um, <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for joining us for another episode, and we will see you next time. Bye, guys. Toodles.